Today on the caucus, Michael Shear gets reader feedback on which candidate has the best web video so far. Also, Megan Lieberman and Jim Rutenberg discuss the Republican field taking shape. Presidential candidates have sort of abandoned the idea of uh, announcing their presidential candidacies on the steps of a courthouse with lots of confetti. Instead, what they do is they make their announcement via a video that they post on the internet, usually on YouTube. I'm Newt Gingrich, and I'm announcing my candidacy for President of the United States. So all four of the presidential videos that we've gotten so far have been very different. You've got Newt Gingrich, who just announced uh, his candidacy this week, looking straight into the camera with a dark background behind him. You've got Mitt Romney, the former governor of Massachusetts, but instead of being in front of a dark background, he's talking in front of a football field. With able leadership, America's best days are still ahead. Then you have President Obama, who announced that he's running for re-election with a video that largely doesn't feature him, but rather most of it is just his supporters uh, talking about why they think he should be re-elected. And finally, you had Tim Pawlenty, the former governor of Minnesota, a highly produced, slickly produced video, almost uh, like a movie trailer. Join the team and together, we'll restore America. So one of the things we did at, uh, was ask our readers at the caucus at nytimes.com to comment on what they thought about the videos, which one they thought was the most effective. I mean, we've got a couple of those answers. Uh, Adam from New Jersey uh, says, if you've seen one video, you've seen them all. So, you know, a sense there that perhaps those none of the videos uh, really uh, provided the kind of, uh, you know, political uplifting message that maybe some of these candidates had hoped. Steve from New York was, was uh, focused on the music and the atmospherics. He says, uh, why no music, Mr. Romney? Bob from New York did exactly the opposite. Bob played them with the sound off. Noted that the, the three Republicans focused largely on the candidate themselves, whereas President Obama's video uh, really focused more on his supporters, which interestingly is a contrast from four years ago when President Obama, then candidate Obama, had a video that did focus on himself. The difference four years later is that, of course, the president needs no real introduction to the American public, having been in the White House for several years, while the Republican candidates really are still at that stage in the campaign where they're introducing themselves, they're, they're establishing a narrative with the American public, and, and so the focus needs to be very squarely on them. And then we have a, a final one here from Deborah from New York, who's very much uh, echoing the real cynicism out there about American politics. She said simply, none of them works best, all of them stink. So Jim, it's taken a while, but it looks like we finally have some Republican presidential candidates. Newt Gingrich got in on Wednesday, right? Yeah, uh, Newt Gingrich, former House Speaker, announced via Twitter. And Social media, videos, the whole deal, You don't right? have to show up in person, just a click of the mouse. <laughs> and we have some uh, people newly out on the trail this week, right? John Huntsman, the former ambassador to China as of 10 days ago. I know, not very uh, long. <laughs> he's, uh, he was in South Carolina, he'll be going on to New Hampshire. Donald J. Trump, the developer, perhaps you've heard of him. I have. He is in New, has been in New Hampshire campaigning like a possible candidate still. And Mitch Daniels uh, is continuing his will he or won't he routine. Right? Yeah, I think last night was act two in <laughs> Hamlet in Indiana. Uh, his wife, Cherry Daniels, Sherry Daniels, showed up at a Republican dinner last night and that was a, actually a moment. Right, because she's sort of a reluctant political spouse. She didn't talk about whether her husband would run. She didn't address it, at least when she was up on the lectern. But uh, it was just a, we got the sense she was sort of testing the waters. What's this going to be like? Right, so it's a crap. tea leaves moment, right? Yeah, and you know how we love our tea. We do. Um, and Mitt Romney had sort of a big week in trying to sort of defend or I guess clarify his position on health care, right? Yeah, his message was uh, Obamacare's got to go. The plan I did as governor of Massachusetts might be similar. Uh, it was really good for us, but I don't recommend it for the country. But states can decide these things, the federal government yeah, should, yes. right? Yes, an, an argument he had made uh, four years ago, and it was hard then, it's even harder now. So it looks like we have a sort of mostly settled field, but there are still some looming questions, aren't there? Yeah, we're almost getting there. I mean, Mitch Daniels remains the biggest question right now. He will soak up a lot of support, including from the kind of Bush Republicans. One thing we should note, CBS News this morning reports that Laura Bush, former first lady, right. called Terry Daniels to say, you should think about this and I'll support you and help you. And there's still a couple other maybes out there, right? Mike Huckabee, there still seems to be a wide berth for him to kind of come into this race and take up some... Social conservative? Yeah, he, it's, it's waiting for him. 
And finally. Uh, we haven't heard her name in a while, but Governor Sarah Palin of Alaska could come in and really change the race. We know that she loves surprises, right, Jim? Yes. Yeah, so when you start reading on the blogs and, the, you know, throughout the Internet that she's not running, could very well be the day she announces she's in. And that would completely shake up this race once again.